Hello, I'm Maria Barnes. I'm the Collections Officer at Chesterfield Museum and I'm stood here in front of one of Chesterfield's most impressive medieval objects. This was essentially a medieval crane which helped build the church. But not many objects survive from the medieval period, so we have to rely on replicas. So on the table here I have a range of objects that help to tell something about medieval life. They would have been part and parcel of ordinary life at the time of the Battle of Chesterfield. So I'm going to take each group and tell you a bit more about them in detail. This a um, medieval item looks incredibly like a cooking pot, but it isn't. It's an early fire safety device. It's called a curfew, which it comes from the French couvre-feu to cover the fire. Most houses in medieval times were timber framed with wattle and daub filling and a thatched roof. So as you can imagine, with open fires, candles, flammable materials of the houses, and particularly in towns where the houses were close together, there's a big fire risk at night. So the easiest thing to do at night with your fire would be to put it out, but then you have to make a new fire every morning. So these were really, really useful um, items. They would keep the embers going overnight because they have an air hole here um, and stop any um, loose embers from causing a fire. This is, is an item that would have been used in most households um, in, in medieval times, a really useful domestic item. So these items here tell us about lighting in medieval times. How did people light their homes? Well, a lot of people used oil lamps. These could be made out of pottery and later glass and were often hung from brackets from the wall or from the ceiling. But with lighting, there is a bit of a difference between rich and poor. The cheapest form of lighting is to use this item here. This item is called a rush nip. What would happen is you would use a reed stripped of its outer green covering and dip it into tallow, which is a form of animal fat. Now, because reeds can't stand up on their own, they get put in these little pincers here. And to get extra lighting, what you might do is not just light it at one side, but light it at the other end as well. And from that comes burning the candle at both ends. Now, if you could afford it, you might want to buy one of these lanterns here. This would have housed a candle inside. It has these piercings to let the heat and air in and out, and also has this horn door, which stops the candle blowing out, but also lets you see that light come through. The great thing about this item here, though, is the fact that it's portable and has a handle on the back. These items here tell us a bit about how people ate in medieval period. A lot of people would have drunk out of a leather tankard. Now leather is a really useful material, but you need to make it watertight. And what they did was line the, the, the inside with pitch so that nothing leaked out. Pottery um, jugs and mugs were also used. Um, it could be as ornate as you wanted, depending on how much we wanted to pay. But what you also might notice about this table is that there are no round plates. They're actually rectangular. And these are called trenchers. And of course, again, depending on your wealth, you might be using a wooden trencher or a pewter trencher. And what wealthier households used to do was put a very thick slice of bread at the bottom of the tensure, the meat would go on top and the um, bread would be distributed to the poor afterwards with all those nice meat juices and fats soaked into it. Also, there's something that's missing on this table, and that's forks. There were no forks in the medieval period. Spoons and knives were used, and again, different materials for those different uh, classes of wealth. The type of material that they're made out of depends on how wealthy you are. Most people would have been using 
um, spoons made out of horn or wood, um, but pewter spoons for those who could afford it. This unusual item here is called an aquamaniel. It's quite a high status object. It's used by the nobility or lords of the manor, but it's also used in the church, in religious services and rituals. What it is, is like a jug. So the water is poured out. And it's for washing hands before a meal or quite often for a religious um, ritual. But they also reflected people's interests as well. This gentleman here is Saladin. He was Richard I's opponent in the Crusades, so I can imagine it was quite a talking point at the time. In the medieval period, many people made pilgrimages to sites associated with the life of Christ or that of a saint, um, in the belief that their, their illnesses might be healed or their sins would be forgiven. In Britain, many people visited the shrine of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Walsingham in Norfolk. Um, other people might have gone to the tomb of Thomas a Becket in um, Canterbury, and that is what is represented on this one here. More adventurous people might go further afield, all the way to Jerusalem, or the shrine of St James in Santiago. Mm -hmm. 